So we're going to this phrase in verse 41 where Yeshua says, I do not receive esteem from men. Okay, esteem is a respect and admiration combination, an honor that's a, a high. So it's adding honor and admiration together. But they're persecuting him and wanting to kill him because that's really not the issue. Just like it's never the issue culturally when one culture is attacking another culture or whatever, or politics or whatever it is, it's not about the issue. It's about what's behind the issue, which is almost always power. Yeshua was threatening their power because, after all, if he was healing people and getting a reputation for it and doing these things that were not in line with the current power structure, it may undermine the current power structure's authority with the people. Do you take upon yourself and understand the weight of that responsibility, the heaviness of the burden of responsibility of being an example to those who are observing you? You know, you guys all put your seat seat on, but do you think about what you're doing while you're wearing them? Because after all, you're declaring outwardly what you are. You wear your MTY shirts, you claim to be messianic, Torah observant in Israel, but do you think about what you do, what you're wearing the shirts, and you're declaring what you declare to be? You've told all the people at work, you told all your friends, but then they watch you, and they see leavened. We're going to get to that from around Passover. What's the leaven we talk about all the time? Hypocrisy. So what is, what is it that you're supposed to do on Shabbat? What Yahweh tells you to do. During certain eras, it meant going to the temple and offering sacrifices. There were absolutely sacrifices to be done on Shabbat. The temple was busy on Shabbat. The, the priesthood was busy on Shabbat doing the things that were commanded to do on Shabbat. Holy Day is the same thing different temple services, different sacrifices that were required for holy days. Holy day fall, fell on Shabbat, they had to do both. Transfer that over. He says, stop coming to me, go to him. Yeshua is doing more or less the same thing. He says, look, I've got your attention now, great. Now let me redirect your attention upward to the Father. Because the church has gotten stuck worshiping the Son. And they really don't focus on the Father like they should. Yeshua did what he did so he'd get your attention. And so rightly so. And is he worthy of honor and praise? Absolutely. He said, now that I've got your attention and you're giving me honor and praise, let me redirect that in the right place. I'm going to redirect it upward. So now even is when dead are hearing the voice, but then there will be a time in verse 28 when there's going to be a resurrection and those who are in the tombs shall hear his voice. Different death we're talking about here. There's the walking dead, and then there's the buried dead, okay? The breathing dead, and the not breathing dead. But he's trying to tell you that you, while breathing, can make a choice to pass from death into life so that you will be effectively in the right place when we get to verse 28, because he says there will be a judgment, there'll be a resurrection. He says, and in that resurrection, those who have done good. That sounds like works. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I'm not seeking my own desire in the matter, my preference of what I think is right and wrong and everything else, but the desire of the Father who sent me. See, you are all out there sitting on those little judgment chairs, judging each other through your own desires and your own filters of right and wrong, etc. You may even convince yourself that what you're doing is the Father's desire, that it's in line with the Father's desire, but are you even capable of actually seeing that clearly because you're so emotionally charged? This is not easy, this thing called life, this fleshly life. It'll be easy when we get the real life. But in this one, we've got all kinds of emotional stuff. We, got, we have to deal with the ego, the, the, the I don't like, the I prefer, the why not, why this, why didn't you, why are you letting them do that? Why don't you make them stop? Why? Oh, goodness. Why, 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 why? He says, and you do not have his word staying in you because you do not believe in him whom he sent. Now, again, 
Isn't that the problem they had with the Yahweh of the Old Testament all the way through? Did they believe Yahweh? No. Did they listen to Yahweh? Not very much. For short periods of time, a little bit. He's saying, you didn't believe in me in that form. You don't believe in me now. You're not receiving me now any more than you received me then. He says, because if you had believed Moses, if you believed Moshe, you would have believed me since he wrote about me. Now, people think, oh, you mean that one place in Deuteronomy when he says, a prophet like unto me, blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. He wrote everywhere where he said, thus said Yahweh, he wrote about Yeshua. He wrote about me. He said, but you didn't believe Moses. Because if you had, you would have believed me since he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how are you going to believe my words? Because they're the same. 